Okay, guys, Timmy coming at you again. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about beta blockers. But before we can talk about beta blockers, there's a couple of things you got to know. Or you probably know them, so we'll just review them. First of all, there are two divisions to the autonomic nervous system. And the word autonomic means that that stuff happens automatically. Let me give you an example. You eat some Doritos. You don't have to think about contracting your duodenum. Like, oh, yeah, I had some Doritos. Yeah, okay, there it goes. That's because it happens automatically. And the two divisions of the autonomic nervous system are the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. And the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system work like an old man drives a car. They never take their foot off the gas, and they never take their foot off the brake. If they want to go faster, they simply push down farther on the gas. But they always keep their foot on the brake. So what does that mean? What am I trying to tell you? This is what I'm trying to tell you, is that you always have some sympathetic stimulation to the cells of your body. You also have some parasympathetic stimulation to cells of your body. And they work in tandem to keep your body in homeostasis, right? Balance, that's a good thing. There are conditions though that cause a greater activation of the parasympathetic or a greater activation of the sympathetic. Let me give you an example. When you go to bed and you say your prayers, yeah, God bless Timmy, and you go night night, you stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system is referred to as the rest and digest, so it kind of slows things down. And the neurotransmitter for parasympathetic stimulation is called acetylcholine. So that's the chemical that's released at the nerve endings that will stimulate the cells to help you rest and digest. On the other hand, if you're sleeping, and then you think the Hamburglar comes into your house, and you hear a big boom on somebody breaking some glass, and the Hamburglar you think is in your house, you're going to get scared. And you get scared. You hear the noise. Oh, bam, glass and break. I oh, know, it's stupid, right? Here we go. Here's the thing I want to point out. The sympathetic nervous system innervates your body in series. Basically what that means, it's a fancy way of saying that when you get scared, the sympathetic nervous system activates almost all the cells of your body to do one thing, and that is to prepare you to run or fight. Now at my age, I prefer to run because I could get hurt. Anyways, I digress. Now look, here's the other thing. Because it's in series, when the sympathetic nervous system is activated, it produces changes all over the body. So you could never use the excuse, like my students know this now. They could never use the excuse, hey, Tim, I can't come to class. My liver's scared. So what that means is, is that you can't get scared just in your liver. When you get scared, you get scared all over. And when the sympathetic nervous system is activated, it releases the neurotransmitter nor epinephrine, nor epi. And here's the kicker. Here's a real important piece. The sympathetic nervous system directly innervates the adrenal gland that sits on top of your kidney. That little middle portion, the medulla, has inside it a hormone that's really important. That hormone is called epinephrine. Epinephrine, or adrenaline, is a hormone. So what that means, the hormones of your body, norepinephrine, um, I take that back, epinephrine, they augment the sympathetic nervous system. So they augment the neurotransmitter norepinephrine. So the sympathetic nervous system, when it's activated, 
it activates quickly, but it goes away quickly. The effects of epinephrine take longer to act, but they act longer and they amplify, they make stronger the effects of the sympathetic nervous system and the neurotransmitter norepinephrine. Here's the kicker. Now you got epinephrine in your blood. You're not going to believe this. Here's blood capillary, and here's a cell. In this case, it's a heart cell. How do we know it's a heart cell? I'm writing heart cell. Watch. In order for epinephrine to exert its effect on the heart, this is crazy. It has to bind to a specific receptor on your heart cell. That heart cell and that receptor, that receptor is called a beta receptor. Oh. And in your heart, you got beta-1 receptors. So watch. When epinephrine, and you always have some epinephrine released, you always have some sympathetic and parasympathetic stimulation. So you always got a little bit of epinephrine circulating. Here's the other thing. When you're scared, you simply got more of it. So... When epinephrine binds to a beta-1 receptor on heart cells, I'm going to skip the chemistry part. I'm going to tell you this. That is going to increase your heart rate. It's going to make your heart beat faster. And it's going to increase the force of contraction of the heart. And if the heart contracts harder. The ventricles of your heart contract harder. That increases your systolic blood pressure. So if you've ever been scared before, let's say, for example, you're going to take an advanced anatomy and physiology exam in my class. You're going to be scared. Epinephrine is going to be released. It's going to bind to beta-1 receptors in your heart. That's going to cause your heart rate and the force of contraction of your heart to go up, and that's going to increase your systolic blood pressure because the force of contraction went up. Simple enough, yes? So <clears throat> you're not going to believe this. You know, I got to tell you, I find it hard to believe. If a person has high blood pressure, and more importantly, if they've had if they've got blockages in their coronary arteries or they've had a heart attack, after they give them the drugs to stabilize them, the first drug they're put on is called a beta blocker. And beta blockers, according to some people who make videos, block beta receptors. Nice. What they never tell you is that epinephrine binds to beta receptors and beta-1 in your heart. So if you have high blood pressure or you have a high heart rate for whatever reason, one of the drugs that can be given to you is a beta-1 adrenergic blocker. Adrenergic adrenaline epinephrine, it blocks epinephrine from binding to the beta-1 receptors in your heart. And if you block the beta-1 receptors in your heart, that will decrease your heart rate. That will decrease the force of contraction of your heart. And if you decrease the force of contraction, you will decrease 
systolic blood pressure. That's how cardioselective beta blockers work. And they end in LOL. <laughs> Lava. Alum. Yeah. Watch. The reason that doctors wear lab coats is because they have little smartphones in them and they'll look up a drug and they'll say, hmm, a tenolol. What's that? They look it up and they say it's a cardioselective beta blocker. And because they know how beta blockers work, they can close their phone. That's how it works. So if you want to understand pharmacology, you have to understand the mechanism of action. I just explained to you how cardioselective beta blockers work as antiarrhythmics and as antihypertensives. Thank you very much. I hope you learned something. I sounded a little, uh, I don't know, agitated. But here's why. You watch some of these other videos and they never tell you that epinephrine, binds to beta receptors. I just did. LOL. Thank, uh, thank you oh, very much. Timmy has left the building. Oh, by the way, real quick. As I'm uh, recording this, I'm watching Maury and who's your baby's daddy. <laughs>